Hello. Okay. <laughs> I want to wish you all Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Sorry, I'm not going to preach in Deutsch. <laughs> First of all, I would like to thank God for sending me here to teach me so many things through, his, through this ministry. Secondly, I want to thank you all for your hospitality and fellowship shared in these three weeks. It really felt like home to me and I already feel like a little bit German. <laughs> By the grace of God, he gives me the honor to deliver today's message. This message is about the vision and life decision of Ezra. Do you also have a clear vision and exciting life decision to this new year, 2016? <laughs> well, the most powerful aspect of vision is that it changes your way of thinking, which in turn changes the way you live. So an Olympic athlete endures long hours of training day after day because he's motivated by the vision of a gold medal. A mother endures the painful labor of childbirth because the vision of her newborn baby sustains her. And a fat man resists the temptation of chocolate and the desire to eat because he's motivated by a vision to fit in a 45 size jeans. So vision is a power and hope that motivates us to do great things and to overcome hard times. Vision keeps us going when there doesn't appear to be any other reason to keep pushing forward towards the goal. So a person without vision has a very monotonous life. He just follows his daily routine. But those who have God's vision in their lives change the world. Amen. Amen. Ezra had a vision. This vision guided him to make a life decision that changed the history and the spiritual situation of Israel. So I pray that through this message, we may also receive a vision that bears fruit to a life decision for us this year. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing us here to hear your powerful word of God. Please give us, give us the humble and correct attitude to receive one word and to learn through Ezra's life. Use me as your precious in instrument in this time. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so part one, Ezra's identity and vision. Let's read together verse 1a. Okay. Read it. <laughs> Ezra lived during the reign of the Persian king Artaxerxes in Babylon. About 140 years ago, the Babylon king, Nebuchadnezzar, had besieged and destroyed the city of Jerusalem and the temple, and had deported its inhabitants back to Babylon. But seven years, 70 years after these events, the Babylon Empire itself was conquered by the Persian Empire. This initiated the return of the first wave of Jews back to Jerusalem. Another 80 years later, it was, it was Ezra 
who was the leader of the second wave of Jews that returned to Jerusalem. So who was this Ezra? Look at verses 1 to 5. These verses contain Ezra's genealogy. According to his genealogy, Ezra was a descendant of an old and famous Israelite priest family. Ezra could even trace his ancestry back to Aaron, who had been the first chief priest of Israel. But Ezra also belonged to a new generation of Jews who were born in Babylon. And as a new generation, he could have had problems to find his own identity. Probably, he received many questions like, do you feel more Persian or Israelite? <laughs> or if the F World Cup final were Persia against Israel, which team do you cheer? <laughs> but Ezra was very clear about his identity. He knew that he was a priest of God's people. He knew that he had the responsibility to help and teach the word of God to his people. So when he had clear identity, conviction of his identity, he could receive and believe in a vision that God gave him. So, what's our identity? Korean, German, Brazilian, doctor, lawyer, programmer. Yes, all these things are correct. But John chapter 1 verses 12 and 13 says, Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor or human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Bible says that firstly we are God's people and children of the Almighty God. Sin makes men lose their true identity. They forget their purpose and mission. And that's why we used to be hopeless. But Jesus came and restored our relationship with God. So many people can think that their identities are related to their professions, countries, or duties. Like their identity as a good father, or a good professional, or a good student. But our true and new identity as God's people was paid through the high cost of the blood of Jesus. So Jesus gives us the new identity as God's people and he expects from us that we will be his light for this world. So let's live every day remembering and confessing our true identity as God's people glorifying the name of Jesus. Amen. So look at verses 6 to 9. Ezra came up from Babylon to Jerusalem. So when Ezra held on to his true identity, he could make a big decision in his life. He decided to go back to Jerusalem. This wasn't an easy task. Basically, he decided to become a missionary. He had to leave his country and family. Not only that, but he also laid down his career and comfort in Babylon. So from a human point of view, it looked like a very foolish decision. Why did Ezra make this, this decision? <coughs> when Ezra clearly knew his true identity, he could have interest and love for his own people. So he studied his whole life the Word of God and the Law of Moses. He searched 
for the answer and reason for the current misery and pain of his people. And after deep studies of writing the book of Chronicles of the kings of Israel, Ezra realized that the captivity and suffering of Israel was a consequence of their sins and of leaving God's word. So Ezra had a vision that if his people obeyed the word of God again, they could be restored as a priestly nation. So the people of Israel really needed a Bible teacher. So Ezra realized that he could be a spiritual leader and a priest who would teach them to have the correct relationship with God. And teaching them the Word of God, they surely would be changed because the Word of God is powerful. So Ezra had a vision for his people. So what was that vision? Let's read Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 and 6 together. I'll read in English and you guys in Deutsch, please. So, okay, one, two, three. Oh. Yeah. Now if you fully and come on, the nations will be my treasured possession. Although the whole world is mine, there is for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to these guys. So this was Ezra's vision for his people. He knew that God would bless his people again when they obeyed their commands, his commands. They will be the most pressure, precious and treasured possession of God. They could be again a holy nation and a kingdom of priests. Ezra really wanted the spiritual restoration of Israel. But in many ways, this was very difficult to believe. Jerusalem was poor with no walls and the people returned to their sins. They took Gentile women and had children with them, disobeying God and going back all over again to their parents' old sins. But Ezra believed and held this vision and this motivated him to live according to his vision despite the discouraging situation. Ezra believed that if Israel had even just one Bible teacher, the people would change. Amen. So what about us? What's our vision? Everyone can have a personal vision received by God through prayer or through His servant. But there is one vision of God that is universal. He gives to everybody through His Word. God wants us to be royal priests to the world. Amen? Amen. He gave us a new life and blessed us with His forgiveness and grace. But God's will for us doesn't end here. God doesn't want that we just enjoy His blessings in our own fellowship. But He wants that we share it with others. So the heart of man can return again to God. So for this purpose, to make us receive this vision, God sent His only Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ also said, Do you love me? And feed my sheep. This means that Jesus' vision for us is that we feed his sheep. Jesus gave his life for this vision. When he willingly died on the cross, 
He did it with the vision and hope that we may be saved and be transformed to royal priests and loving shepherds inspired by His love. So when we truly love Jesus, we can live a life that ignores His greatest passion and vision to this world. For now, we can see a lot of discouraging spiritual situations. A lot of sins, wars, corruption, churches shutting down, and cold hearts in ourselves and in others. But when we hold this vision given by Jesus, we can overcome any situation and become excellent Bible teachers and royal priests to our friends, universities, and countries. Amen. Because one person with God's vision based on the Word of God can change everything because the Word of God has true power. I pray that we may accept and hold this vision to be our main goal and passion in our lives as Jesus did. Amen. Part 2, Ezra's Life Decision. Let's read all together verse 10. Let's read verse 10. One, two, three. For Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord and to teaching its decrees and laws of Israel. So Ezra's decisions were based on God's vision. This verse talks about his faith and commitment to the Word of God, believing in the changing power of the Word of God. This is his life decision, and it's all about focus. There are many temptations, worries, and strategies of Satan to make us slowly distant from God's vision. Ezra probably had this in his life too. That's why he made a life decision to always stay focused in God's vision and in the Word of God. Since I was a kid, I wrote many testimonies. In the beginning, I was kind of forced to write them. And when I shared them with my father, it was very similar to a school test. <laughs> At the end, when I read the one word, if my, if my, if my dad said, Amen, <laughs> it meant that I've passed the test. <laughs> but many times, he just said to me, no, my. <laughs> and most of the times that I needed to rewrite the testimonies, the main reason was that I didn't have a personal decision. Through this, I realized that deep meditation in the Word of God always leads us to repentance and to a personal decision. To always stay focused on the Word of God and in the vision of God. So now let's take a closer look of Ezra's life decision. Let's read one more time verse 10. Let's read it. For Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord, to teaching its decrees and laws in Israel. So first, Ezra decided to study the Word of God. So what does it mean? Psalms chapter 1 verse 2 explains it. It says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. So study the Bible consists on meditating day and night about the law of the Lord. It means to research the Bible, think carefully in every meaning, in every word of God. 
When we do that, we find true joy and delight. I believe that nobody likes the taste of coffee at first. Because when we drink coffee for the first time, it tastes weird and bitter. But when we drink it every day, we improve, we improve our taste of it. <laughs> we even know how to differentiate quality, flavor, and intensity. And that's how we learn to appreciate and enjoy coffee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Yeah. But this is the same with the study of the Bible. At first, the Word of God may taste bitter and weird. But when we study the Word of God every day, meditating constantly, we can find the true hidden taste and delight on it. That's why Bible study and daily bread are so important. They are the refiners of our taste in the Word of God. So second, Ezra decided to observe the law. This means that he decided to obey the Word of God. And this is the most important part. We can study and we can teach the Word of God. But if we don't obey it, we become Pharisees, the, most, the group most rebuked by Jesus. The obedience, the, beauty, the obedience pleases God more than offering and sacrifices. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 says, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. God truly delights when we obey His voice more than everything else. But we know that how sometimes this can be really hard. That's because we have our own desires and our own way of thinking. But we have to fix our eyes in Jesus who obeyed perfectly till the end. We can be challenged to, be, to obey the Lord through the Word of God. But most of the times, God works through His servants. So I pray that when a servant of God challenges us this year in any situation to obey the Word of God, we may obey absolutely fixing our lives in Jesus. Third, Ezra decided to teach the law. In one word, Ezra decided to be a Bible teacher. He decided to live as a royal priest and to feed the sheep of God. He would deliver not only the messages of grace and joy, but also the passages of rebuke and repentance. He acknowledged that Israel's misery and shame was God's rod of loving discipline, so they would repent and turn to Him. Ezra's conclusion was that above everything else, his people needed a Bible teacher who would teach them the law of the Lord. So what was the result of Ezra's vision and decision? Chapter 9 and 10 of the book of Ezra report that the Israelites gathered together and made a covenant to separate themselves from unbelieving people. It took long 14 years until Ezra's teaching of the law of the Lord led to a true spiritual awakening among his people. But Ezra never gave up teaching the law of the Lord to his people. And after the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem, 
the people gathered in Jerusalem because they actually wanted to listen to the law of the Lord. According to Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 3, Ezra taught the word of God to the Israelites from morning to noon for about eight, six hours. Ezra also trained Levites who assisted him to explain the word of God to his people. This was the starting point of a great repentance movement. The word of God moved the hearts of the Israelites and opened their eyes for the faithfulness and love of God. The Israelites confessed their sins with many tears. And they made a written covenant that was signed by the political and spiritual leaders of Israel where they obligate themselves to walk in the love law of, of God. So when one person, Ezra, made a life decision based on God's vision, a whole nation experienced spiritual revival. Amen. I believe that through holding on to God's vision and spiritual life decision, we will live this year being spiritual leaders and Bible teachers in Germany, Brazil, and to the world. Amen. Amen. So, hello. <laughs> As you already know, I am Joshua from Sao Paulo, UBF in Brazil. My father, uh, my parents are missionaries Elijah and Joy Maria Park. And since I was a kid, I was disciplined to memorize, copy, and study the Word of God. But I didn't understand why I had to be so different from my friends in school. I hated when my father used to say and force me to say, you'll be a missionary. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> so when I was around 14, I dated a girl for five years, hiding, hiding it from my parents. But suddenly, I was very disturbed. I was a slave of my sin. Many times I felt dirty and I couldn't even talk to my parents freely because of my shame. So I suffered for a long time alone and I couldn't take this huge weight anymore. So in the Summer Bible Conference of 2010, I confessed in my testimony all my sins. And in that conference, I received the word, It is finished. Receiving this word, I felt that Jesus said to me that all my pain, shame, and suffering were finally over. So I was finally with joy and peace, and I willingly decided to offer my life to Jesus Christ as a missionary, Amen. accepting my new identity given by Him. Amen. At that time, I started to study dentistry. And it took me long seven years. And by God's grace, I graduated in December. So I came here to have a time to pray and to ask God what I should do next. Because I received a direction to start my master's. The thing is, I really didn't want to. <laughs> I just wanted to work and start earning money like my friends. But during these three weeks and preparing this message, God showed me that my real problem is that I don't have a vision in my life. 
And that's why I'm scared of suffering and denying myself for Jesus. Through John chapter 21, I could accept Jesus' vision to feed his sheep as a royal priest in this world. Amen. I repented for living a selfish life that ignores the greatest passion and vision of my Lord Jesus. And I accepted his vision for my life as well. The problems of Brazil seems to be poverty, lack of education, and corruption. But the real problem is the sin problem and the lack of the Word of God. Jesus calls me to be a spiritual leader and a holy priest in Brazil. Amen. So my life decision is to stay focused in this vision, is to start my master's and become a college professor. Amen. I really don't see how it may become possible. Because I can see a lot of discouraging factors like I don't have a research area. I failed the admission test for master's program this year. And I won't earn any money. <laughs> but these things are necessary, necessary difficulties and training to the realization of God's vision in our life. Amen. My prayer topic is to wake up 5 a.m. every day, early in the morning to pray, to receive strength and courage to live by God's vision in my life. Amen. Pray for Brazil to become a holy nation and a kingdom of royal priests that also sends missionaries for the world mission. Amen. In conclusion, God has a vision that we may be royal priests in this time, feeding Jesus' sheep. Mm -hmm. This life and this vision seem to be, seem to look insignificant. But God uses people with vision. Mm -hmm. He changes the history and the world through these people's vision and life decision. Mm -hmm. In this year of 2016, we need to hold this vision that is full of love and hope and make a life decision, decision to stay focused on it. Amen. So I pray that God may help us to be leaders as Ezra, committing ourselves to the greater vision of God and the life decision in this year. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, <clears throat> I thank you because we don't deserve it, but you have a great vision for our lives. I thank you because you call us to be royal priests in this world. So help us to receive your vision and to believe in this vision and help this vision to bear fruit to a life decision in this year. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.